what's up guys, CP Moddy here, back with another video and back with a new series. It's a little bit impromptu, but I thought why not make it anyway, and this is known as Dead Tech. Now I love sharing the experience of using tech, checking out new stuff, reviewing stuff, sort of just having my own opinion on tech, and I guess sharing it along, bringing you guys along for the ride. But the one thing that I've never really thought to share was the actual aspect of what happens to tech when it actually dies, because a lot of the time, I just sort of deal with it on the side and then, hey, look, it's back and it is working. And unfortunately, my 1080 Ti has gone ahead and kicked the bucket just 43 days after I went ahead and purchased it. Now, it's all well and good me sharing videos about, you know, the benchmarks and the specs and how things go. But once the cameras do turn off, a lot of us do run into other issues, which, well, like this guy, do happen and isn't really the best. So I thought, well, let's share what actually happened with this guy, what I did to try and fix it and then what's actually going to be next for this particular card. Now close followers of the channel will notice a couple uh, weeks ago, almost a couple years ago, a couple weeks ago rather, uh, from releasing this video, we did unfortunately miss a Saturday upload and that is because that is the day when the card actually died. It became a Sunday upload. But either way, uh, I did spend my whole Saturday night trying to troubleshoot this thing and turned out it was just completely dead. So let's kick off this series and cover what exactly happened, how I diagnosed this thing and what the issue is and then what is next. Now I'm going to put this guy down because for some reason Zotac has put these little sharp thingies that have like cut my hand already. So we're going to put that maybe here. So, as I was saying, what exactly happened? Well, as the title says, the brand new GTX 1080 Ti is now dead. Now, for the past week and a half of actually using this thing, it had been showing signs of dying, with me coming back to my computer after going downstairs to grab a drink, or just coming back to my computer and finding the screen was blank, unresponsive and I couldn't actually use the system to other times when the computer screen would go black when I was in the middle of using the computer was still responsive so if I was watching a video the audio would still come through just wouldn't output an image reboot basically fixed it for me now it wasn't one of those things where it was bad enough that I could take it down to a uh, back well, take it back rather to where I bought it and uh, get a warranty swap because it happens so infrequently that I couldn't say turn the computer on for an hour and you'll see what I'm talking about. It just happened to die. And this happened whether I was watching a video, playing a game, editing a video, anything like that. It would just happen at random, even five days apart or one hour apart. It was really all over the place. And honestly, when it actually died, I wasn't too surprised because it was already showing signs of possible death or some sort of issue in there, which wasn't really great. Right. Now, whilst I was having these issues, I did try other things like switching around my display connections. I have a three monitor setup, so I tried other things, but all the connections would go black as soon as the screen would go black. The HDMI and the display ports all went black, so I knew it was more than just a single port that was going bad. It was something else within the card. On top of this, I also too tried moving the PCI Express slot before it died, which didn't really help. I also too tried uh, adding some new drivers or trying some older drivers because maybe there was a bug somewhere. Also too did not help. And Saturday night at 7.31pm the screen went black and the computer basically hung. Now I knew it was 7.31pm because right as it went black I hit control S and then I guess a couple minutes later the computer decided to hang because well there was no video card signal coming from it so I'm assuming something went wrong in that process and I pushed save on my Premiere Pro project and when I finally got the computer back it did say 7.31 was the last time so that was the last time the last frame was drawn from this video card. Now, unlike all my other black screen issues that I've been having, I also do had a little bit of a different one with this case because all the screens went black, but the uh, left-hand side monitor actually came back on and then got stuck on the desktop image. It just sat there and I couldn't really do much with it. I rebooted the computer and the GPU would not display a signal. I got the standard beep code of everything is okay, followed by the GPU error beep code, which obviously means nothing is okay for the motherboard. The first thing that came to mind was, oh no, my $1,100 thing is now completely dead. So for that, I went ahead and went downstairs, grabbed something to drink. It was also to around dinner time, so I went off and had dinner as well. Now, the reason why I did this was I wanted to look at this problem objectively. Because this is such an expensive part, the last thing I wanted to do was be kind of freaking out and break this $1,100 thing and not be able to get my warranty back. And also too, didn't know at the time whether it was the video card or something else in the rest of my system. So I did need to look at this objectively because again, it's $1,100 video card. 5,000 plus dollar system, I really don't want to be messing things up inside of it. So the fastest way to damage a system is just to be freaking out. So as I've always said in all my other videos, I went off, 
did something else, cleared my mind and came back. For me, I'm more than happy to work on 40, 50, 60 thousand dollar servers, networking hardware where there's like one cable cost you like five thousand dollars. I'm more than happy to work that kind of stuff because I'm able to look at it at basically objectively. I can see what the problem is, what I need to do and then go ahead and actually do it and that's what I needed to do in this case. Unfortunately, I was kind of all over the place because well, such an expensive thing to go ahead and die and I really didn't want, want anything else to break. So again, I took a break, came back, I saw where the problem is, I went ahead and did some troubleshooting and then we can get the output. And anyone out there who's facing this problem, go ahead and do that because it will make things so much easier. Also too, I didn't want to miss something very simple. Maybe the power connector came loose and it was something like that. Maybe the PCI Express slot wasn't seated properly or something really basic where a fresh set of eyes can definitely help troubleshooting in this situation. So I went off and did something else and came back. The first thing, sure, I did go ahead and power it off when I went away so there was no further damage. But when I came back, the first thing I went ahead and did was try to change the PCI Express slot. Maybe something went bad on the motherboard because I was getting a post find a uh, beep code and then I'll go ahead and get a GPU error. I thought maybe it was something to do with the PCI Express slot. So popped it out, put it in a lower PCI Express slot, still 16x, still totally fine on my X99 motherboard, hit the power button and the same thing. I then thought next up, well, I'll put it back in the first slot because that's generally what I like to use. And I'll also do try changing over the PCI Express power connector. From time to time, they might go bad. So, hey, I've got a modular power supply. I've got some other cables, whacked another set on and also to again, same problem. So then the next thing I went ahead and did was just eliminate the video card entirely. Now I had been suspecting the video card because we do get that beep code to tell me the computer's posted fine. However, then we get the GPU, which for me tells me the CPU is probably fine, the memory is probably fine, the uh, storage array is probably fine, and also to the motherboard's probably fine. It's probably going to be that GPU. So I pulled it out and threw in a GT610. Now you may be thinking, hang on a second, a GT610, that's a super low end card. Why would you even bother with that? Well, the answer is it's low power and doesn't need a power connection. So basically what I was doing with this particular card was verifying that the PCI Express slot not only worked, but also too was delivering the correct amount of power. Because if this video card, the PCI, uh, sorry, the GT610 doesn't receive enough power, it's not gonna boot. So I could tell instantly if the PCI Express slot was faulty or good. So I threw that in, went ahead, booted perfectly fine, straight into Windows. I got a picture on the screen, everything was good, which was a clear sign the GTX 1080 Ti was definitely causing me the problem. Now, up until this stage, a lot of people can do this. They can change the power connectors over, they can change the PCI Express slot. Also too, did a clear CMOS in there, which is basically just pull the battery out or hit the button depending on your motherboard. Again, something everyone can do. And I also do through in a different video card. Now, maybe you only have one sort of desktop in your system. Sure, that may be fine. But if you do have an iGPU in your system, just pull out your video card entirely, make sure the system boots. So that's one thing you can go ahead and do. Whereas I went ahead and did a couple other steps that maybe not everybody could do. I went also to over and threw this guy on my 7700K test bench. That did not boot at all. And I grabbed the 1080Ti from that test bench and threw it in my desktop system. Now, no, I don't own this test bench, so I couldn't exactly keep it. And that's why I don't have another one that's working here because it's not mine. But I did go ahead and verify that the slot and also to the motherboard, the CPU, the RAM, everything about my current system is also to working fine. So it is definitely, unfortunately, this video card that has been dead. I also do then wanted to try one more thing. Now, Nvidia has this bug where for some reason, maybe once in a video card's life, it will show signs of being dead. However, it's not actually being dead and I've just labeled it as the Nvidia bug. I don't know too many other people who have actually labeled it anything different, but from when I used to work in a PC store to PCs that I still see today, the Nvidia bug is still a well and live. Now, basically what this is, is from about the 400 series and up from Nvidia, they have this weird bug where the video card will stop the system from booting. You'll get no screen, you'll just get error codes flying from the motherboard and everything looks really, really bad. The simple fix for this is to take the video card out, put in another GPU if you don't have an iGPU or use the iGPU, so whatever other option in terms of graphics, let it boot up, shut it back down, let it boot a second time and shut it down, throw in your old video card and everything is fine. I don't know why this works, I don't know how this works, but I've had everything from the 900, 700, 600 and now the 10 series, not this card but another card, all of them showing signs of, well, the card's broken, I throw it back onto the iGPU, boot it up, put the old video card back in and it perfectly works. I don't know what the problem is. 
it just magically fixes itself. So I tried that with this video card and no, it is unfortunately still dead, which is pretty unfortunate. Again, I've no idea how this fixes it, but in my case, it didn't fix anything. So it was basically dead video card and I guess also two corrupted 7700K uh, boot file. For some reason, I managed to corrupt the boot sequence because I must have uh, uh, stopped the boot right in the middle of its critical loading period. Whoops. Anyway, so the symptoms for me is a no display on the screen. The GPU does get warm. So when I did have it in the actual slot, I could actually feel on the back of the card where the core is, it actually got warm. So it's actually doing something. It must be processing the frames. It's just not outputting them to the screen. I've tried other cables, other systems, and also to have tried other systems, video cards in my particular one, meaning the 1080i is a complete dud. And it's not just a software or driver issue, it happens to be the actual system, uh, the actual video card itself. So I guess then it brings us on to now what? Well, this guy's only 43 days old for me and I've actually not overclocked it. I've done nothing other than take it out of the box, slot it in the top card and start using it on a daily basis. I've used it as a general system. I've shut it down overnight. It hasn't been run out of spec. It's been well in spec the entire time and it has unfortunately failed, meaning I've just must have got a dud unit. This is not to say Zotac Max bad video cards and it's also to not to say that the 1080i is a bad video card, not at all. I've seen Zotac cards last for a very long time and in fact I do have another Zotac card that is running, it's not exactly the world's oldest but it's also to had no problems. So Nvidia's not to blame, Zotac's not to blame, I just believe it is and unfortunately a dud unit. Which is to say, well, every company out there is going to have a dud unit, every phone, if you're looking at phones for example, every phone's going to have a dud unit, every video card's going to have a dud unit, and hey, I just happen to get a dud unit. Hopefully, however, I can get my warranty. Now, as I did mention, that does bring us on to the what do we do now? Well, this thing's again only 42 days old. So hopefully tomorrow I'll be going down to the PC store and getting an RMA on this guy and not having to wait two weeks. I checked the stock of the store. They've actually got quite a few of these guys in stock. So hopefully I can just convince them to be like, here's my broken one. And then they'll give me a uh, new inbox unit because... Well, that's what's going to happen anyway. I just don't want to wait the two weeks for this guy to be RMA'd while I have to use my old 660s uh, until I can get a secondary unit. And I guess that's what you should do if you have this exact same problem. If you have a new video card that's still in warranty, just go ahead and get it warranty swapped. Don't pull it apart. Don't take the cooler off. Don't do anything to the actual unit itself. Just hand it off to someone, say that it's broken and get yourself a brand new one. Don't tell them that you overclocked it, even though I didn't overclock my unit. Don't tell them you've done anything to it if you've also too done something to it, because the last thing you want them to do is be like, well, you broke it, that's it, no warranty for you. So definitely get a warranty swap if it is still under warranty and don't do anything that's going to be taking it out of warranty because let's face it, $1,100, I really don't want to be dropping another $1,100 on another one of these because they think I broke it, even though it was showing signs of dying leading up to this problem. If you are out of warranty, well, you're a bit of SOL, basically, because there's really not that much you can do. Sure, you can take the cooler off and you can have a bit of a poke around in there, but honestly, there's nothing you can really do. And when it comes to video cards, they're so full of tiny circuits. Basically, once they're gone, they are gone, and there's not really much you can do. You could put it in a toaster oven, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't work, but honestly, there's not exactly much you can do. But all in all, there's really not that much you can do until you get a warranty swap, or if you can't get a warranty swap, there's really not that much else you can do. So that's about it for this video. My 1080 Ti has unfortunately died, and I'm super not impressed that this $1,100 thing is now worth exactly $0 to just about anyone out there. But on the plus side, we do get to start a new series, and if you do have a similar problem, hopefully something that I did mention in this video might be helpful for you to follow at home. Though that said, let me know down in the comment sections what the most expensive single tech failure you've had. For me, it has been a $5,500 Cisco router that accidentally got static shocked, but hey, it wasn't really my fault. Uh, but this guy would definitely be up there with some of the most expensive pieces of tech that I've had fail on me. And uh, let's hope I can get that warranty. But guys, do let me know down below. If you want to pick up a working GTX 1080 Ti, I'll leave that link down in that description box. But thanks all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.